Hasashimi, the classic Japanese dish of cutting up fish, plating it up, and that's it. Let's jazz it up. Oh, before we begin, I have to let you guys know that I have to re-record everything in this episode because the audio was completely jacked once I imported it into my computer. So please help out the channel. Hit that like button, and subscribe, and support the show on Patreon. Now, some of you sushi and sashimi snobs watching this might be looking at me like, what are you talking about? Sashimi doesn't need anything put on top of it. It's perfect the way it is. And I partially agree. Now, when it comes to something like this, otoro, fatty tuna belly, all you need is just a splash of soy sauce to enjoy its creamy umaminess. However, if you want that quality from a fish, you're gonna have to pay out through the nose. This alone cost me 30 bucks. So to get the most out of your sushi grade yet not super luxurious fish, I come up with the following sashimi ideas. Our first one shouldn't hopefully piss off the sushi snobs. You're gonna need salmon for this. Now then, let's talk fish. Whether we're using tuna or salmon, it has to be sashimi grade. Now you can buy this at your local Japanese supermarket or do your research on where you can pick up some in your area. Cut it to two to three centimeter thickness against the grain. Plate it up. And now for the fans fine. Grate some lemon zest onto our salmon. Ugh, note to self, don't zest lemons when you have a healing wound on your thumb. And sprinkle everything with chopped chives. Salmon, lemon zest, and chives. Now, this is pretty decent by itself, but there's one more twist. We're gonna be using ponzu as a dipping sauce. The citrusy taste of the ponzu will help complement the lemon zest and the chives and the sand. So, re-straighten your ray bands and put that chalice down, Bourdain. Everything is going to be fine. Now, this next dish may look familiar if you're from New York. So take some salmon, cut it to the aforementioned two to three centimeter thickness. Plate it up. Next, layer on some very thinly sliced red onion. You might have to use a mandolin slicer for this. And finally, top everything off with chopped dill. That's right, I made salmon and lox in sashimi form. Mm. It's like I'm transported to New York. Except, except without a million sewer rats eyeing my salmon. Now take some tuna and slice it up like I did here. Uh, sorry, the camera wasn't recording. Well, you know the thickness. Next, squirt on some takoyaki sauce. Japanese mayonnaise. A dusting of seaweed powder. And finally, a sprinkling of bonito flakes. Now, feel free to disagree but I think this version of takoyaki is so much better. Or at the very least, it's a little bit more, um, female friendly. All right, for this one, you're gonna need seared tuna. Just sear the tuna in a medium sized saucepan over high heat, 30 seconds per side. Fire, fire, fire. And while we let this cool down, let's get to work on the dressing. Let's crush three cloves of garlic into a small bowl. Half a teaspoon of salt. An eighth of a teaspoon of sugar. One third cup of ponzu. One third of a cup of rice vinegar. And whisk in half a cup 
of grapeseed oil. Just a taste. Now let's give this a taste test. Why not? One more garlic clove. And a splash more ponzu. Perfect. All right, our tuna has cooled down. We can slice it up as for the usual thickness. And hey, if you don't know what the thickness is, whose fault is it really? I've been going over it time and time again. Now, you wanna be a little bit more careful when slicing this time so you don't shred off the top of our seared tuna. Plate it up like last time. Spoon on our dressing. And finally, top it off with some baby arugula. Now, if this dish looks familiar, that's because I got inspiration from a seared ahi tuna salad video I did back in 2018. AKA the chef behind the slaughter. I mean, good God did I suck at color grading back then. And those are four sashimi ideas to try out at your next dinner party. Oh, fair warning, since you're consuming a ton of raw fish, it's gonna do more damage to your toilet bowl than any late night Taco Bell binge. Just with uh, less guilt involved. This has been Taste Cut and Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun. And meaning it this time. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, smash the like button. If you really liked the video, become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Thursday. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram and support me on Patreon. Oh, and uh, I'm sorry, but I've been waiting all day for this.